Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to talk about when is the time you should register yourself as self-employed. Hello, my name is Aaron Patrick. I'm a chartered accountant, certified UK trainer, and also that QuickBooks chap. Now in this video, we're gonna talk about when you should have yourself registered as self-employed and start filling in self-assessment. If I go through all my comments, I look through my Facebook forums, I look at all different comments that are going on, you'll notice that a lot of the time it's confusion as when I should register to HMRC. Now the question of when is actually really straightforward. When is about intention. Think about it. If you're a business and your intention was to start a driving school or start a butcher's or even to start a gaming channel, then your intention is really straightforward, isn't it? Your intention is to go out there and earn money. If you're talking about eBay, Amazon or all those platforms like that, then it's all down to intention. So if you go up into your loft and you get a product and that product then gets sold on eBay, your intention was never to make profit by buying the item and then selling it off. And if you went to source an item in one way or another and you paid money for it with the intention then to sell it on later down the line, your intention is clear, it's to make a business. One of the common topics that I see when I look through comments and I look at everything that comes through with it is that people are confused about thresholds. Some people are talking about how the threshold is clearly going to be circa £12,000, which is your personal allowance. Because before £12,000, you don't pay any taxes. And that's incorrect. £12,000 personal allowance is how much money you can earn in a typical tax year without having to pay taxes. And that's on everything. So if you have a full-time or part-time job, if you have rental income, if you have investment income, if you have the self-employment income, you have to add all that together. And if or when it goes over 12,000, at that point, do you pay taxes? But that's not your requirement to tell HMRC in the first place. Everyone in the UK has a requirement or potential to pay taxes. And we pay taxes based on a tax year. And the tax year itself starts on the 6th of April and goes all the way to the 5th of April, each and every year. Now, if you were just in a full-time or part-time job, then all of that is done automatically for you. There's no requirement for you to fill in any tax forms at the end of the year because your employer will send all that information off to HMRC, they'll do all their fancy calculations, and then all you'll get back in response, if you've seen it, is what's called a tax code. And then all a tax code is designed to do is to make sure that you've paid the right taxes in the right year. So either you've overpaid in one year, underpaid in another, whatever it's gonna be. Now the reason HMRC can automate that process is because they know all the facts and figures. Your, that your employer at that point has told them everything they need to know. Now when you start putting stuff in there that HMRC don't know, for example, you're buying and selling these items, then that's when what's called self-assessment comes into play. All self-assessment means that when that tax year finishes, then at that point you have a requirement to tell HMRC anything that they don't know about. And to tell them that, you fill in what's called a personal tax return, or sometimes referred to as an income tax return, ITR. And all that tax return does is go, okay, let's look at all my income I've earned in that year and tell HMRC all about it. Then they can calculate the taxes for you and that's done and dusted. HMRC will only even issue you a tax return if you tell them you have an intention to sell things outside of normal pay packets, normal salary and everything that goes with it. So you need to tell HMRC if you are looking to make income or make sales outside of the stuff that they can readily see. As Soon as that happens, it's your requirement then to do a tax return. And what does that requirement mean? Well, it means that each and every year, after that 6th of April's been and gone, then at that point, you have a time frame in which to file a tax return. That tax return needs to be in there by the 31st of January if you're doing it online. And also you need to make payment of anything that may be due by that 31st of January as well. And what goes on a tax return? Everything. Everything you've earned in a particular tax year. It could be your wages from your part-time, full-time job. It could be rental income, it could be investment income, it could be all the money you've got from these businesses as well. But it's critical that you tell them. Now, how you tell them, we're gonna look at it at the end of this video. The other thing that people talk about is this whole misconception about how much I can earn before I have to start telling them. 
And yes, there is a £1,000 threshold before you have to physically declare any income. Now, when I say that, it has to be £1,000 of sales. And that's not just £1,000 from eBay, Amazon, Etsy, whatever. It's all of it combined. So boot sales, all sorts of say, selling elements. Basically, if you have a business where you're buying and selling, then it doesn't matter what platform you're selling it on, you add all of that together, and if it's over a thousand pound, then you have a requirement to keep it on a tax return. Now you need to prove to people, or prove to HMRC, if it's below a thousand pound. So either way, you've gotta be keeping adequate records to say if your turnover was above or below a thousand pound at any point in time. So your requirement to keep business records, your requirement to do a tax return doesn't really change. What changes though, is if you are below a thousand pound, then when it comes to doing a tax return, there's nothing to put on the tax return. You're clear. You just have to put the other income you may have earned in a particular year. But I urge you to at least be putting a tax return together because the worst thing you can do is realize it's gone a thousand and ten pound. You're over that threshold and therefore you haven't got a tax return to fill out because you haven't told them and then you're having to backdate everything. One tip with HMRC is never get into a position where you're having to backdate things. That's when penalties, fines, interest and all that sort of nasty words come into play. If you're always up front with HMRC, you tell them and you treat them like a real person and you communicate with them, then you'll be absolutely fine. One of the worst things you can do with HMRC is bury your head in the sand. If you talk to them, explain to them, and do what we're about to do now and register as self-employed, then you're fine. And your worst case scenario if you register as self-employed with them is that you have to complete a tax return and put on there and you've sold a thousand pound or more worth of, of items. And then you're gonna have to put all the information on there and fill it in. And on this channel is the best place for you to subscribe because I'm gonna go through what you have to put on your tax return. But the best case scenario there is you've still got a tax return to do, which is gonna be straightforward because all you're gonna have is over income, but because your self-employed income isn't actually above, so the sales you made isn't above a thousand pound, then there's nothing for you to put on there. By all means, you can complete that element of it and tell HMRC, but you'll see there when it comes to reading the actual requirements of putting the information, it even says, if it's below a thousand, you don't need to tell us. So let's clarify a few things. If your intention is to buy and sell, then please get yourself registered for self-employed. And again, we're gonna look at that now. When you've registered for self-employed, your requirement then is to file a tax return by the 31st of January after each tax year has finished. And all you've got to do then is file that tax return. When it comes to filing the tax return, there's gonna be questions to answer and elements to put in there. Again, keep subscribed to this channel and we'll go through that and make sure we're happy with it. Or have a look over at the Boffix channel where for £10 a month, they'll file a tax return for you anyway. But either way, if your intention is to sell, get yourself registered and get yourself in preparation to file a tax return. I promise you it's not as scary as it seems and it just means that you're not gonna miss any deadlines or any thresholds at all. Okay, let's look about how easy it is to get yourself registered for self-employment. So first and foremost, get yourself over to the HMRC website, either using Google or type in www.gov.uk in the top there. From there, you wanna to get to HMRC's site and we have right on the first page, the option for self-assessment. Now, one thing HMRC has done really well lately is give lots of information. So I've clicked on self-assessment and on here, I'm already being told a lot of information that's relevant to me as a self-employed individual. So it's telling me here how I can talk about what self-assessment tax returns are. I can talk about how to register and file for self-assessment. That's what we're gonna do now. And then it also tells me about what sort of record keeping and everything else that goes with it and how to pay my bill. Now, the bit I'm interested in is register and file for self-assessment. From here, you're taken to this page, and basically it's gonna tell you how to get this through. So first of all, file your tax return online. That's where you're gonna go if you're already registered. But if you're filing online for the first time, this is where we need to go. And for us, we're interested in self-employed. So here, self-employed. Register if you are self-employed. If, if you have to send a tax return and did not send one last year, you need to register. Again, this is the one where you're gonna get yourself into trouble, so let's make sure we're out of that. Um, and if you have not sent a tax return before, we get to register directly online. We have to provide them with an email address. 
And that's the email address if you ever need to talk to Boffix. HMRC will then send you a confirmation code via email. So we stick that confirmation code in and continue. Full name, I'm just gonna put my name for now. And then you get asked to create a password. And this is so you can get back to it at any point. And then HMRC will give you a government gateway. Now this government gateway is gonna be really useful for you because it's that number plus the password you've put in to get back and get online. And then all you need to do now is follow in the on-screen instructions. And that's the point here. You're just telling HMRC real information. So at this point, all we're gonna be doing, all we're gonna be doing is going through and saying, I want to tell HMRC that I have a business. Press next. This tells me which ones can use this service. So the one I'm interested in is self-assessment. All the rest of them I'm not interested at this point in time. So we are just on came for self-assessment, which is about self-employed and sole traders. And that's the term that when you first start out is what you're gonna be utilizing. Now it may not be the best term for you long-term or the best business setup for you long-term, but again, as you set up and start out for the first time and you wanna keep things simple and straightforward, highly recommend just going down the self-employed sole trader route because then you can test the water, see how good or bad or easy or hard it is for you. If your business idea has legs, by all means talk to someone, myself, keep an eye on the channel, look at that other video that I did about which version of the business is best for you, and then think about moving it on at that point. But for now, to keep things as straightforward and simple, as a bare minimum, just follow this advice of putting yourself as self-employed or sole trader. So I'm gonna tell me what I can't do from here, but I don't need to do any of that, so that's fine, and then tells me what to do next. So I'm gonna tick this box here, self-assessment. I'm then gonna press next. I don't care about PY, I don't care about that, and I'm not looking at corporation tax at this point. I'm then gonna say I'm a self-employed sole trader, this one here. And then all I need to do is put in, when did I start? Now again on that date, just make sure, if you're doing it within the tax year, you're gonna be absolutely fine. And that's why I always sell people just to get registered straight away. Now on this page here, it even mentions that 1,000 pound again. If you have an annual income from self-employed of 1,000 or less, then you may not need to register. And it's that may not. I personally would recommend you just register. It's so tempting not to at this point, to bury your head in the sand and think that actually I'm not needed to do this, let's stay away from it. But again, all you're doing there is giving yourself an issue if you were to go over the threshold, if you, you know, unintentionally didn't add, you made a mistake, you didn't add up the right columns or whatever it's going to be, you're going to be in the mindset. Or the worst case ever is you completely forget. You've smashed through that thousand pound barrier and you keep going and keep going and keep going and then have to go back to HMRC at some point and tell them that you've been registered, you haven't registered in time. So do yourself a favor, get yourself registered, look how easy it is. And then worst case scenario, you're gonna have to file a tax return to say that you've earned exactly what HMRC already know you've earned anyway. This next page basically tells you it's gonna take, um, this information is what you're gonna need. So your national insurance number, your full name, date and birth, and any contact details for the business. And it's a nice form to fill out. It's basically telling you this is information you've still got to do and it'll give you an, uh, an, an X if you've got an invalid and a tick when you've done that. And basically all you're gonna do is fill out this information. When it comes to our UK resident, that's gonna be yes for most people. So that's basically if you're registered. The nice thing is I've got a little eye over here that tells you basically how you can find out more information if you need to. The are you a share fisherman? Are you a landlord property? Are you a Lloyd's underwriter? Are you a director, minister of religion, examiner? or business and investment or construction industry. Those are sort of questions. If you don't know what they mean, chances are you're not involved in them. But all you need to do is just press the little uh, I next to the little question mark and you'll know. Most of these are particular people of society, particular roles within society where they have different tax elements. If you're just a standard sole trader, majority of the time that doesn't matter to you. And if you are part of some of those elements there, more than likely you know about them, and at that point you'll know what the effect of that's gonna be. So this is just a checklist to make sure you're not one of them. So most of the time, you're gonna be saying no to them. National insurance is important, date of birth is important, and the name change is important as well. This employment status indicator here, that's basically if you are just working for one person getting a basically a salary from them when really they should be paying you through PYE. So this is protecting you and making sure you're right. You're actually gonna be working for many different people because you're selling to many different businesses. 
So you should be absolutely fine on that one. You then have to provide a postcode. Then you have to provide an email address and telephone number. And then finally, it's your summary page. And as simple as that, you make sure you're happy with it. Press next. And then all you need to do is tell them about your business. And all you've got to do then is give them your business address, the date you started, and then you're good to go. You get the final chance to view and print it, and then you send it off. What HMRC are then going to do for you is going to give you what's called a UTR number. UTR is Unique Tax Reference. It goes with your national insurance number and it helps them make sure it's you. So when you're asked to file in tax returns and everything like that, that's what they're going to ask from you. UTR number, national insurance number. And it's as simple as that. Yes, there's a bit of time to wait and then you've got to wait for that to come through the post. So again, to avoid any delays in getting things filed on time and everything else, just get yourself registered ASAP. Hopefully you've seen how simple it is and hopefully you now have an understanding that if you have an intention to buy and sell something, then make sure you're registered for self-employed. Once you are registered, all you need to do then is wait for a tax year to tick on by and then complete a tax return. Again, subscribe to this channel and we'll make sure you understand how to file a tax return. My name has been Aaron Patrick. It's been a pleasure to do this video. Make sure you keep an eye on this channel and don't forget to look at our friends over at Boffix Tech Tips for more information on filing tax returns and even the opportunity for them to help you as well. If you want a tax return filing for £10 per month, go and have a talk to them at Boffix. Again, it's been a pleasure to do this video and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. Yeah, 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 yeah